We are moving to a new section now, where our aim is to test for differences or improvements that we make in our process. This is very common in engineering and scientific systems. We make small incremental changes to our process and we wonder if they had an actual effect. Did the improvements get lost in the noise or error in the process? Let's take a look at an example here. A company has been operating their process for many years and recorded the batch yield. This is a critical outcome of quality. The 10 most recent samples from the process show the average yield is 79.9%. Now the company is investigating a replacement feedback control system on the batch reactor. A new supplier is proposing a solution that they claim will improve the yield. As is common in practice, the supplier will allow the company to test the controller on a few batches. They agree to 10 batches being tested. After the 10 tests are finished, the average of these 10 new runs is 82.9%. That seems to be an improvement of about 3.04%. That improvement, if it is real and not due to luck, will cover the costs of the new controller and make some profit for the company. But it could be due to luck. It might be that the temperature was warmer over the days that the batch was running with a new controller. Maybe you had your best operator watching the process and operators do have a small effect on the yield. Remember, you don't want to be the engineer that recommends this controller and later on when it has been running for a few months, it really is the same or maybe even worse than the original system. How will you be able to quantify the risk of making this decision? Statistical tools in the rest of the section of the course do that really well for us, and we'll end off this video with an example. We should always start with a visual look at the data. Often we can immediately see whether it is worth continuing on with the statistical calculations or not. We start with a raw table of the data, actually. In the left are the last 10 values from the original controller, and then on the right are the samples with the new controller. It is hard to tell from the table whether the improvement is real and permanent. There are values here on the right of 92 and 93 with the new system, but the old system also had a value of 92 occasionally here on the left. Let's try a box plot instead. What you see is that the median is higher in the new system, but what is more interesting actually is the spread, the amount of deviation in the data. The spread seems to be roughly the same for both control systems. Actually, we saw that there in the table with the standard deviation values. We could also plot the data in a third way, as shown here. This time, I've used the mean as the thick horizontal line instead of the median from the box plot. I've also intentionally shown the raw data to give you an idea of the spread instead of using whiskers. From this newer plot, we could reasonably conclude that the new system is a little better. The points have similar scatter, but are shifted up a little higher. Remember we said at the start of this course to always look at your data in context. Let's do that now. Here I'm showing batches 1 to 300 from the original feedback controller. This is data that goes all the way back in time. The last few time points are from when the new controller was in place. The question we are asking here is if we buy the new expensive controller, will the data for the new system B be slightly higher if we had to extend this process on for some more batches? Is there really a permanent improvement here in the system? Pause the video and based only on these data, what would your recommendation be? Should you buy the new system or not? You are the engineer and it's your reputation. Will that 3% be permanent or was it just pure luck that we had that? The answer of course is it depends. But I'm going to show you a really interesting way to answer the question, which can help you figure out on what it depends. Take only the data from the original feedback controller, in other words, the 300 data points. What was the chance that by pure luck, you historically had a 3% or more improvement? Remember, in the first 300 samples, you had the same controller. If the new controller made an actual difference, then a 3% improvement should occur with very low probability by pure chance in the original data. Let me show you this on a spreadsheet. Divide the 300 data points into small consecutive groups of 10 samples followed by another 10 samples. 
Calculate the average of the first 10 and the average of the following 10. Subtract these averages. Notice we follow exactly the same pattern as the question we're trying to answer above, between the 10 samples from the original controller and 10 samples from the new controller. Then I copy and paste that formula down to the next set of batches, batches 2 to 11 and 12 to 21. If we keep track of these differences, we clearly see some groups have an average difference that's greater than 3%, even though we had not used a new controller here in the past. Sometimes the average difference is worse. We would expect that most of these numbers will cancel out and we'll end up with an average of about zero because they're all from the same controller. Now, if I copy this formula to the very last set of data, where the last 10 numbers are from the new controller, we see the calculations being done where the actual difference occurred. All the prior differences were from the situation where there really wasn't a difference. So our question then becomes, how likely are we to see a value of 3.04 or greater in all these rows above? That number is going to be our risk, the risk that we are wrong in recommending the new controller. And we can show this effectively using a dot plot. A dot plot is a new type of plot, but it is intuitive. Place a dot on the horizontal number line corresponding to the difference. Most of the dots should be around zero, and we can see that here. Draw a vertical line now, and we observe 31 of the 281 dots lie to the left of that 3.04. That's about 11% of the area. We interpret this as an 11% risk we are making the wrong decision. There is an 11% chance, due to pure random luck, that system B had a 3% higher overall value than system A. Maybe system B was not technically superior. At least, the data indicate that system B is no worse than the original controller, system A. Now we're in a much better position to decide. We can take these numbers and work with our colleagues and our manager to come to a decision. Does our company tolerate risk at this level? Some companies have a very high risk allowance. If this controller costs $250,000, then your company might easily approve this investment, even with an 11% failure probability. But if the controller were to cost $5 million, you might look at running more tests and checking the cost benefit and net present value calculations with a sensitivity analysis. Either way, a statistical tool like this has helped you make a better decision with numbers and not gut feelings. Download the data from the course website and try creating the spreadsheet calculation for yourself. Notice that we've used no statistical assumptions. We did not assume the data are normally distributed, we did not need the central limit theorem, and we didn't need that the data had to be independent. In the next videos, we are going to consider the situation, however, when we do not have this much data available. Sometimes we run tests for system A and system B on a very small number of samples. So then how can we make those statistical calculations? We're going to have to make some of those assumptions.